You're watching the courtroom, even though the stakes for India Inc. have risen exponentially in legal matters and corporates perhaps are under far more stress than ever before. There is a growing need for a more informed judiciary. That's the word coming in from one of the leading corporate lawyers of this country, Zia Modi. In an exclusive interaction with me earlier, I began by asking her if the time had come for India to have specialized courts to address complex economic matters. Commercial courts have been on the anvil. They say the commercial courts bill will be passed. I think even if it is passed, we're looking for at least five to seven years of judicial familiarity and training so that the courts become more specialized and understand it. See, in a way, you can't even blame the judiciary because in what situations did they understand or did they need to understand what the Foreign Exchange Management Act was? There weren't a hundred cases coming up. The hundred cases coming up were transfer of property, sale of goods. People come from the district court. You don't normally get FEMA there. Today, you do have a set of judges who have heard SEBI issues more often, quite familiar with it. But they are not guaranteed to be the ones that hear it every time. So you go to a new judge, you start the training process all over again from the bar at the expense sometimes of the client who will not get the level of sophistication that he would otherwise have expected. So I think commercial courts, I'm told, will happen soon. But I don't see the effect coming till people are invested, the judiciary is invested in that. I think things like, you know, competition law let's say that goes to the Supreme Court from the tribunal how many judges really would understand today the sophistication of the economic theories behind it we we grapple quite often surely so would the judiciary so again I think that you know we have to accept that this is a joint learning it's just that when the learning is given the domain should be retained and not fritted away between too many for, for, for you know, those sort of cases. So I think it will happen, but like all things in India, the <laughs> elephant moves time. slowly. Let's talk a little about another very major verdict or two or three of them that we saw coming out of the CCI. Clearly, it's early days according to you. And how do you see it evolving, the entire competition law situation in India? Well, I think the fine made everybody sit up for sure. Uh, these sort of numbers when you start imposing on corporates obviously they're going to look and take their situation quite seriously in fact I was talking this morning to a couple of clients basically saying you know what's your behavioral pattern like uh, how do you deal with your distributors what is your purchasing pattern are you talking in an association um, all these sort of issues now I think companies have to introspect very clearly and very quickly and apart from just the combination and mergers and acquisitions uh, area, I think they're going to have a lot more to say in the behavioral pattern of uh, verticals, horizontals, bid rigging, cartelization. That sort of uh, behavior is going to come under strict scrutiny. I think the Competition Commission sometimes has gone overboard in the quantum of fines. I think there will be a scale back. I think... Um, and a lot of this would get tested yeah, going sure, forward. Sure, nobody's going to pay it out sure. and say thank you very much. Maybe a bit of it was shock value. Uh, maybe a bit of it was to get attention. But uh, I think that uh, there will be large fines. And if there are cartels and bid rigging situations, I think you can expect large fines. So I think that again, over five to seven years, you will see more competitive behavior in the market because it will be too expensive to misbehave. Zia, how concerned are you about a sense of fear psychosis that exists within corporates today that, or perhaps even within the bureaucracy today, that if I am going to put my signature on something or if I'm going to take a decision on anything, I might be put behind bars. Do you think that has kind of abated? Do you think as a system we went overboard on that entire thing? Well, you know, I often say fear is good. Nothing wrong with a bit of fear. It keeps you from misbehaving too much. So, um, I think that, you know, if uh, people are thinking twice about what they're doing and asked to sign and put their John Hancock on and what will be the consequences, that's good. They should be thinking. I, I want to uh, talk to you a little about another issue which uh, got headlines recently, the entire insider trading issue. We've seen some uh, very significant orders being passed in the US. 
uh, and being discussed yet in the Indian context. There are questions raised that why are we never able to, uh, you know, achieve such convictions or achieve such final orders. Why do you think that has happened? Well, you look at the US history. Insider trading has got this phenomenal publicity and success story only when wiretapping happened. Right. Um, before that, where were the insider trading convictions in the US either? It's a very, very difficult thing to prove. Um, SEBI, I don't think, has started they wiretapping. Don't. They're not allowed to. Uh, so, therefore, uh, the real issue is insider trading globally has never been successful to bring to the table for prosecution simply because the lack of absolute proof. There's a lot of circumstantial evidence, but very little proof. So SEBI, I think, will have to have a, a, a better mechanism for investigation like the SEC has got so far. The other thing is that uh, for a long time, the consent order system meant that if you got a show cause for insider trading, many people would like to just bring a quietus to the matter, whether they were guilty or not, just to say, you know, let's get this out of my uh, horizon by entering into consent terms. SEBI now under the new consent guidelines will not allow Do you welcome insider. That? I think it's a good thing. I don't think that, uh, I mean, philosophically, it's a good thing. I think the, the downside is that there will be a lot of mental space wasted of SEBI uh, for smaller issues. I think it was open for SEBI always, uh, as it was under the earlier regime, that if there were certain cases they spiritually didn't feel should be settled with money. It was open for them not to. So why fetter yourself? Slow process, I don't think. I think the SEC has come of age after decades. You're willing to give Sebi more time on this? I think so. Mm. All right, that's all the time we have for you in this edition of The Courtroom. But do send us your feedback and suggestions. We have our Twitter handle and email address coming up on the screen for you. But before we go, let's take a quick look at The Courtroom Diary for the coming few days. <laughs> <laughs>